thank you very much for accepting my invitation and uh, you know we know that you have a very unique uh, you know kind of an of you know candidature for being eb1a in terms of your designing actually that was your expertise and as part of our program we do invite various people across the spectrum so we had engineers software engineers then we had somebody data analyst a dancer financial expert so we have people from different spectrum who have been coming here so would you like to kind of uh, first tell about what you do and uh, then come to your eb1a what has been your inspiration and motivation actually yeah definitely so um by trade i'm a designer and i design graphics design websites um you know and all that good stuff and i originally didn't think of you know this possibility because i thought i'm not good enough and you know i i thought you have to be an oscar winner um i think that's what stopped a lot of people from applying in the first place but something changed um when i actually thought that my company at the time would be able to sponsor me and i asked them nicely and the answer is no um and i've already kind of you know demonstrated my um uh, commitment and achieve uh, not achievement but you know like my um uh, commitment to my job and then also i you know uh have received good performance review and i was quite disappointed by um the lukewarm you know uh reaction that i received so i thought you know what else can be done um so i didn't give up immediately uh what i did was i went online and checked out some case studies from uh attorney's websites and i discovered that it's not as bad as i thought uh not as you know daunting as i had anticipated before um so i looked at some case studies and i and re- and i realized that it's achievable if you are being strategic and plan for it so i immediately went into planning mode um and actually started to really um you know put together what i have done before and also um create new achievements and evidence that is directly targeted at you know um this is basically you know applying for uh eb1a so what i did was i uh i i started creating works that are targeted for awards that i know normally i wouldn't do that you know normally i would just be doing my work uh but because i have this goal and i have to, you know i really want to achieve it i started to be very intentional about what i do so it took a couple of months from for me to put everything together um but then after that it really i really went into research mode and also um you know kind of uh figuring out where i could shine compared to uh what is basically out of my reach right, right. So, so i picked out the criteria i refer back to it constantly and i definitely feel like you know if they require at least 3 then i need to have at least 5 um in order to be safe because imagine if you submitted uh you know out of 10 criteria that they provided you only have 3 what if they don't think one of them is good enough then it's an immediate denial so i make sure that i at least have 5 or 6 achievable criteria when i submit and that's how um you know how the journey started but i don't know if this is a rush explanation point is when i was i guess like rejected by the company that i work for i sprang into action and took it into my own hands and it paid off because it's actually not as uh unattainable as one might have thought um so yeah <laughs> that's my initial uh background okay. yeah no which are the criteria did you really apply actually and did you use mhm So I um I use the award category. So that one is actually um pretty common for folks in the creative industry. Um and and I I would say that one is more straightforward because it is hard evidence if you if you have won anything or not. Um and there is a side benefit of that as well because once you get um receive some awards then it's easy for you to pitch to be a judge. um at other awards or the even the same awards that you've you know uh won before 
So I, I found that once I received the first award, then I reach out to a lot of um, organizations that have, you know, that host these competitions. And I say, hey, would you consider, uh, you know, me as a judge? And most of them are more than happy to accept you if you have some kind of achievements, because um, all of these judging efforts are, you know, volunteer based. So they don't have to pay you. Um, if you volunteer and then you seem to have, you know, um, enough credentials in, in the industry, why not? So I easily uh, was accepted to nine different competitions as a judge. So that's another criteria that was relatively easy and straightforward to fulfill. And this one, you don't even have to win awards in order to, um, you know, basically be accepted as a, as a judge if you have you know, spoken anywhere in a conference, if you have, um, you know, any achievements at work, really, um, most places are happy to take you as a judge. And I also have an exhibition, which came from the award, by the way, like a lot of award uh, was they also come with an exhibition. So I submitted that, but I'm not sure if they actually accept it me for that so but that was another one right and then there's another one working um in a prominent position in a well-known organization i think that is another one because at, at the time i was working for a well-known organization um so that you know the name itself it kind of bolstered the credential a little bit i would say so if you happen to work at a well-known organization and you happen to hold at least like a senior level position or even if you're mid-level but somehow you can spin it around um, I think you know this can be a criteria that you can look for and um, I, I think I probably have another one that I'm you know blanking out on currently but I at least make sure that I exceeded the three minimum um, to cover my bases Okay, so how many criteria did you actually go for? I think I submitted five. I, I, I believe I submitted five, yeah. And which were the other two? Uh, I think I mentioned three, four already, because but one four. is award, one is uh, being a judge, right? And one is, um, oh, one is uh, exhibition. And another one is, uh, you know, holding a prominent position in a, uh, a, a well-recognized organization. I think those. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm blanking yeah, out, out to if I have another one <laughs> right, right, right now, but I remember okay. those. Okay. And second thing is that, you know, what was your kind of, uh, can you tell us more about your, you of course mentioned about uh, your organization was not really, you know, you did something of your own and uh, you had to struggle a lot actually so could you tell about motivation story and in terms of how many hours of preparation did it take for you um so you're referring to like my motivation absolutely yeah no my motivation was really because um i'm the kind of person that if i was going to edit um you know no matter you know what, what the circumstances are uh, obviously you know ethically <laughs> legally but um it's you know I, I think it's the fact that the company that i worked for at the time they didn't seem to think that you know if i asked for something like that that's something that they would even consider supporting um it's actually very revealing of and then i thought okay if if I can't rely on someone else, then I have to take this matter into my own hands. And EB1 is the only one that you can self-petition, right? So, unless I'm wrong, I don't know if there's another one, but uh, this one I know that you can self-petition. So, I like the fact that you have no one else to blame but yourself if you don't succeed. So, I think that's... Um, you know, I, I don't like the fact, like, if somebody else is the cause that I don't succeed, I, I just feel like, you know, it's out of my control. That's not something I I can do, right? So that that feels a little helpless. So if I, if I do everything that I can, I still don't succeed, that's fine. That's on me. So I think that, I, I don't know, it just gives me more peace of mind. Okay. And, uh, I mean, how many hours of efforts did it take for you to put, actually, in terms of, uh, your, you know, 
the day you decided that you yeah, want yeah. to apply for EB1 and mm-hmm. the day you actually applied? Um, I would say a couple of months. So I think I decided to do it probably around January of um, 2018. And I took, I think uh, it took me about three months to create the work and then started submitting to, you know, awards and everything. And then um, when I applied, it was, um, I think it was almost uh, June. Um, So I think it's around probably six months. Okay. And, uh, okay. And what was your exact niche area of specialization within design actually that you had to use? Um, I would, I think they submitted for graphic artist. It, okay. it, yeah, if that's what you're asking. Yeah, because there's so many like smaller divisions of like a profession and you just have to make sure that it, you know, like the definition actually matches what you do. do. Um, and obviously it requires an advanced degree, that kind of thing, you know, so um, yeah. yeah. Wonderful. And uh, you know, you also have been uh, kind of uh, you published a program and you have been running uh, you know, for EB ones actually and yeah, yeah. about your school and how has been your kind of an experience in terms of you know coaching and mentoring uh, prospective <laughs> even people actually yeah I I mean um, like I'm not doing it right now so far but um, in the beginning I just want to kind of share my knowledge with people because I know it's such a niche um, you know, area that there are not a lot of information around and people might feel very isolated. Um, I mean, I feel that every day myself because you don't have a lot of peers around you that are doing this right together. Um, I find that very valuable, like, you know, the work that you're doing here, very valuable. Um, And later I actually pivoted to teaching design. Um, So it's the same kind of thing, right? Because you want to give back uh, what you have learned and you want to help people who have the same dream as you um, achieve, achieve theirs and make it easier for them. Um, so I find that very, you know, meaningful to me. Yeah. Okay. And uh, how many people have, have, have you helped actually so far in your uh, this thing venture of uh, kind of helping? Is there any? I mean, it, it's, you know, it, if you're asking about just this type of, you know, like the immigration type of um, consultation, um, just a few. I, I didn't do it for too long, probably like five, 10 people. Um, and the reason I don't, you know, do it anymore is because I feel like, you know, well, because I'm a designer, so I want to focus on my area of expertise, right? Um, I feel like the immigration thing, it's like, you know, it's a tried and, I don't know, it's more like empirical and I'm not like a lawyer or anything. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, but I, I I I honestly Honestly, think that uh, very often lawyers, they don't, they're not the best person to consult in the beginning, just because they treat everyone as if they're all the same. And they they just look at your, you know, um, they look at you from not like a human perspective, more like, okay, what do you have on paper? Don't waste my time. (laughs) Okay. Okay. Yeah. And uh, in terms of, uh, let's say, what has been your kind of uh, in terms of your mindset and in terms of your own approach towards work and how people have per- perceived you professionally how do you see that as a difference in pre eb1 and post eb1 actually um i think pre yeah, I'll talk about pre. pre. Okay. okay, so the pre period is more like okay, i know i can do a good job but i'm not really that confident about myself. Um, it's it's normal because we all have, I think a lot of us have imposter syndromes because we, we feel like, okay, yeah, we can do what we do, but are we really that good? No. You know, the immediate answer is no. I think after this, um, what I learned is we are what we make of us. Um, it's, it's, you know, like, I think we first have to believe that we can do it first. And then the second thing is, Uh, getting comfortable feeling uncomfortable because it's going to feel really uncomfortable I feel this every day as well but I just tell myself that this feeling you have to get you have to just live with it but don't let it get into your head and prevent you from doing um, the important things that you want to do so I think after going through this process I have a more confident mindset um 
but as, as well as keeping well just like level headed, right? right? But basically, so basically it's like, like we are probably better than we thought. <laughs> um, I think that's yeah. maybe <laughs> one mindset. Come here, come here. Yeah. Okay, okay. Now that's wonderful. And uh, now I would just leave it. If there are any questions, I would like just leave it open actually. Yeah, I have a question. Yes, sir. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Yes. So once you created your profile, uh, like what was the next step? Like, did you approach an attorney or was it something you self petitioned? I mean, yeah. Yeah, great question. So I went the traditional route. I did approach uh, an attorney. Um, so at first I did some re initial research myself, but um, later I also took a few recommendations from people I know. Uh, because, you know, obviously you want to know if they have good experience uh, with the attorney. And I did end up working with someone who uh, was recommended by a friend. Um, I, I would say it, it probably from hindsight, it doesn't matter if it's recommended or not. You yourself have to bet the person. Basically, you have to talk to them and see how, you know, like ask them a few questions. Like what, what are their approaches and do they believe in helping you you know um kind of like position yourself um in that way because if they're just doing some um you know work that is easily accomplishable by a paralegal right then they're probably not the person you want to work with because anybody can put put a file together anybody can um you know pay attention to little details but some they didn't even pay attention to details and you you need to be a very aware of what they do even if you hire them so don't trust but do that your site i think that's, I think that's like one important. really important thing um i've also seen people who self petition and succeeded i think the requirement is you need to think um like an attorney you don't need to be one and also you need to be very detail oriented you also need to have obviously a good grasp of the language, right? Like you don't want your petition cover letter to be riddled with grammatical errors. I think those are the important things. So you you can decide if you want to do it yourself. And I totally support anyone who, you know, are confident in their abilities, but working with an attorney is also a good option, but you really have to vet them. Yeah, that's what I was saying. <laughs> yeah, okay, thank you. Any other question? Um, yeah, yeah, I have, I have I a question. Uh, Stella, yes. Deepthi here. Um, you said you read some, uh, uh, as part of your preparation, you read yes. some case yes. studies yes. from attorneys' yes. websites. Yes. yes. Can you tell which websites can we go in? Just, no, just to read more. Um, I would say a lot of attorneys, if you like you know search the keyword eb1 uh, attorneys they probably all have case studies i don't remember the exact ones that i looked at at the time because it was just like initial research and also um i i know that if you're if you want to work with a local attorney it might show up you know basically it's based on where you're located uh, at the time i was living in new york so i looked at new york attorneys mostly right um i i think you know, if you can look into their website and at least see one or two, it would be very helpful. Just like survey around Google. Google is definitely your best friend, you know, like the first step um, to to get a feeling of what type of clients they have worked with before. Um, and it also, it doesn't hurt to set up, you know, some consultations. Like a lot of them, they would do a free consultation, like a brief one. Uh, I would take advantage of those. Um, if they charge two, three hundred dollars, you'll have to, I guess, like decide on your budget. But um, I, I think it's worthwhile to do both, like read up first and then have some free consultations. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Any other question, guys? Uh, this is Rajat again. So yeah. again, uh, yeah, choosing an attorney uh, based on like how much they charge versus what is their reputation, it's all up to us right to decide um is that um i mean how, how do we arrive at a conclusion like which attorney should we really choose because uh, mm -hmm. different attorneys might charge a different 
yeah. uh, different amount, right? Yeah, yeah, so, definitely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, so, I um, I think that's a really good question, and everybody struggles with that because obviously you don't want to automatically go with the cheapest because you know we we all wonder if if. The reason they're cheap is because they're not good. Um, it's not off. It's not always the case. I think um, I go with more of an overlap, holistic approach. Uh, I have to consider the price. Um, obviously, if someone is charging, you know, like uh, 60, 70 percent more than uh, a few other people, then I would have to consider, you know, if it's really worth paying that much more. That's one factor. The other factor really is when you talk to them, uh, you you want to have someone who really shows that they care because that's not really a common trait. <laughs> um, so a lot of them, they would, they would treat you like, you know, you're just another number, right? Um, and, and if they're extremely business-like and they don't really uh, feel personable, then that would be another, you know, red flag that I would consider, you know, going away from. And also, are they responsive? Are they always on top of their emails? Doesn't matter how busy they are, they can manage it effectively with help, you know, with assistance, because if you hire someone who is always struggling with communication, then you're going to be frustrated, especially when deadlines are approaching, right? If you can't get in touch with them. So um, I, I think the, the last thing that, you know, a lot of people would ask, they're like, oh, what's your success rate? No one can truth, truthfully tell you that. <laughs> so I think um, that one is something that obviously we really want to know, but I, I think we probably will have to accept the fact that we're never going to know 100% the truth. But if they have these other traits, personable, consistent communication, um, attention to details, and reasonable, reasonable price, um, it could be slightly on the higher end, but not like by a lot, then I think that's a good package. I don't know if that helps. Yep, 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 that helps. Yep, yep, thank you. <laughs> yeah, any other question, guys, before, uh, yeah. Yep. Hey, hey, Stella, this is Pranav here. Hi. But I can get my video on, but uh, one question I had is, you know, in terms of number of support that we are putting, like, suppose if putting in a journal, mm -hmm. how many research do we need, like, four or five, like, two is is good or suppose he is shown speaking opportunities so how many proof do we need like four speaking opportunities or you know five or you know just trying to see does that work uh, are you referring to recommendation letters uh not letters maybe something like you know you've done your research right you have your research published so how many journals should it be published in a number oh i see i see yeah 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 no i i think that's a very common question as well um there's definitely no hard answer for that you probably know that but um i think you know if you only have one that is a little slightly tricky just because i i think people like to see a few right so i would say a few you know it's like three or more i would i would go by that kind of ballpark because um, you can always argue that, you know, you publish one or two, but in a really, really significant journal, right? For example, you published on science, right? I, I don't know all that much about journals, but you can always make a case. Um, but I think if you want to be safe, then I would shoot for three or more. The yeah. more, the merrier, of course, <laughs> but I would shoot for three. Uh, th I wanted to ask uh, Stella about the awards. Uh, yeah. Can you share the process you followed? Uh, you said you focus more on what to do for you know achieving an award. So did mm -hmm. you? And also, if you can tell me if you you know took help yeah. from the outside or did you do it yourself? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, I did it all by myself. I, I mean, because I'm. You know, I'm a designer. There's no one really to help me <laughs> achieve what I need to achieve, right? Professionally, but um, 
At the time I created a an interactive website, um, I did hire someone to code it for me. I'm not a coder and developer, um, but I was able to take advantage of uh, Upwork, which is really, you know, we can uh, always find someone who's a little bit more affordable. Um, so there's a slight investment, but not a whole lot. Um, so I think that's the only quote unquote help that I got. But um, I think that, well, the rest of the process really, I just had to do it on my own, you know, um, just finding out which award is uh, or, uh, you know, appropriate for me to submit to and also managing the cause, managing the deadlines and, um, and then, uh, you know, like framing it, right, actually, I had to help the attorney to frame it and in the end you know kind of like pull out important statistics that because they don't always know what you do so you're the expert um so you might really you know you need to think for them even if you work with them <laughs> i think that's something that i didn't anticipate before but i i knew later that i had to you know i can't be hands off I see. And for the prominent role in, a, uh, in an organization, uh, mm -hmm. did you get recommendations from your current organization or did you also go far back in your previous organizations? Right. Um, I think that would depend on when you work for them. I, at the time, I basically, um, I would, that was my current company at the time so I didn't go back further but I think you can always go back if you had good relationships with them it's not really a big deal Thanks. any other question guys so otherwise uh, we can just uh, close this so Stella any last message that you want to give from your side people who are aspirants and people who you know kind of uh, think that uh, you know, it's very difficult. It's not for me. It's I have an imposter syndrome, and uh, yeah. find people. The whole process very overwhelming. Yeah, I know it, it is overwhelming. But just think of it as you know, I mean, everything that we do in life, we can't do it in one day, right? So I would treat it as a project that you're going to commit to at least for a few months, um, and think of it as you know, if you don't do it now, then later you always kind of question if you should have done it and what would have happened if you tried it i personally hate that feeling so i would rather do it um tried everything that i can and if not then i'll find you know i'll figure out another way but i think it's the the what ifs that i personally don't like um, i don't know about you maybe you're okay with it maybe not but if you have this same you know similar uh mindset then i think you know why not because we, we don't have a lot of time right um so if we're a limited time we might as well do things so that's that's really <laughs> my mindset that's wonderful and yeah. Rajat, you had some question because you just unmuted for a moment yeah you're on, still on a mute Oh, sorry. Yeah, I did not have any questions. So, uh, okay, yeah, okay. it was by mistake. Yeah. No, no, no problem. No problem. So, thank you very much, Stella. And uh, thank you for joining us. It has been wonderful knowing you. And we'll be in touch again. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so thank much. You. Nice meeting, yeah. everyone. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.